in this weekend, Friday night and all day yesterday, Saturday, we really played a lot with the question, what's next? It was very interesting with the beginning with calling off the search, stopping the search, and then if the question, what's next, appears, we got to experience what that generates, what that evokes. And sometimes, of course, it generates inspiration and evokes great excitement and thrill. But often it generates anxiety. What's next? I need to know what's next. What we partially unraveled in the the physical meeting was the possibility to not know, which is really what calling off the search is about. When we are searching, we have in our minds some idea of at least what finding what we're looking for, even if we don't know really what that is, but we are searching for it, that it will fix something that's here. It will take away my my anxiety, or it will make me happy. And in the willingness to not know, we actually can ask the more essential question, which is, what is here? This is a deep question of inquiry, and it is the subject for this morning's meeting. The truth is, we can never really discover what's here as long as we are searching for what should be here or searching for what we think was here and that we have misplaced or lost. So the the challenge to call off the search is huge because we feel like it's somehow tied into the search for, well, salvation, certainly, but also survival under salvation that if we don't search for food or shelter, protection, we won't have it. And if we don't have it, we'll die. And so we have a very deep imperative within our bodies to search. And that's part of what's kept us surviving. So there's nothing wrong with the search, and it's a part of our makeup. But there is a possibility that we can, for a moment, this this period, this hour and a half, or even one part of this hour and a half, one minute, we can actually call off that search. We can stop the search. Then there is a possibility of actually turning the mind back into itself, just reversing the course so that the question, what is here, can be discovered. The possibility of asking that question, the courage to ask that question, and the capacity to tell the truth. Because there can be many emotions that are present, or physical sensations, and that can be part of the answer, what is here. But if we really allow that question to reverberate, to resonate within us, we discover what is always here, what was and what is, and then we will discover will be if it is still here. It's a way of stopping the forward movement, outward movement of mind. It's a natural movement. Our our minds are very adept at moving forward, and as I just said, that's for survival. They're also very adept at moving backwards. We can remember, we can either consciously or out of the blue discover memories that we haven't thought of for years, decades. All of that also can be useful for our survival as well as our entertainment, and it can also be a huge distraction from the essential question of what is here. So if you ask yourself this question now, what is here? And just for a moment, you close your eyes again. It's the same as what are you aware of? 
what is here? You may be aware of physical sensations. You may be aware of emotional sensations. You may be aware of sounds in the room. You may be aware of just some unnameable energy. But do you see that simply by asking the question, there's already more peace? And then as you open your eyes, there is a peaceful alertness that's capable of discovering what is here in terms of monitoring for your well-being and also the deeper, the discovery that brings us together, the true discovery, what is always here and who are you.